at all costs. Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So there was a video that came out from Bajira, which was like a few days ago, actually. And basically it was some gameplay footage of uh, going through the campaign, but in particular, they had also recorded a heap of notables on the tree. So today we're gonna have a talk through the notables that are more defensive in nature, around the warrior, moving up into the int strength areas. And, uh, and yeah, have a bit of a chat about where they sort of fit into the game and, you know, if defenses are in fact at a point where, you know, they're looking pretty good. By the way, precursor to what we're going to be talking about, I actually think we're going to be able to make some of the tankiest builds that we've ever been able to make in Path of Exile quite easily with some of these nodes. But anyway, let's get into the video. Also, if you haven't liked and subbed yet, do it. Get it done. Make it happen. Anyway, yeah, if you want to like and sub to the channel, hit the button below. And uh, anyway, let's get into defensive notables on the passive tree. Okay, so the first point that we're going to talk about is leather-bound gauntlets. And the reason why this is significant is it allows you to stack plus one to evasion rating per one armor on your equipped gloves. Now, this is really good because what it means is that per, for every armor you have on your gloves, so you have two or 300 armor on your gloves, then basically, if you use the thing called Iron Reflexes, which is a notable passive point in the tree or a keystone passive point in the tree, this basically converts your evasion into armor. So it allows you to almost double dip on the amount of armor on your gloves. This is similar to the mechanic as it existed in Path of Exile 1. And the reason why armor is more potent than how it was before is because now you don't have spell suppression and other various mechanics like that you simply have armor that can block spells or not block, but mitigate the damage off of spells. And that's quite significant at the end of the day. And armor stacking is actually going to be relatively easy to achieve with notable passives like this. Okay, so the next point that's actually got me excited is Titan Binding. So what this does is you gain 15% of your maximum life as armor. And this is just moving in the same direction of armor stacking is going to be much easier than what it was previously. You're going to be able to get to crazy levels. Now, how that's going to feel is another question. But basically, from there, you could also synergize this with a uh, ascendancy point on the Titan called Mysterious Lineage, which gives you 20% more life. So then you're going to get 20% more life, then gain 15% of that maximum life increase as armor, which is going to give you a ton of armor. And if you're going to play like armor stacking and stuff like that, uh, which you're inevitably probably going to do on the Titan, this is going to be one of the points you're probably going to want to put into your build from a defensive standpoint. Okay, so the next note that I really like is Fortifying Blood. So the point on here that's really important is not the Leech. Nobody cares about the Leech. The Leech is simply a trigger. Like if you're running a character that has regeneration, then that's going to be neither here nor there. But the thing that's significant about this point is the 40% increased armor and evasion rating while leeching. And that's will also synergize with other stats while you're leeching. So potentially, you know, if you are playing a character that has a lot of armor, a 40% armor buff is pretty significant in most circumstances, at least from my experience in the previous game. I'm assuming that it will be significant in Path of Exile 2 as well. So this could be a pretty good node to get if you're looking to try and buff your armor up a little bit further and also put a little bit of leech back into your build at the same time. Now, I wouldn't recommend maining leech with this if you're playing like a character that's got regeneration. Realistically, you only need to proc leech to be able to get this to work. And there's probably other stats and or crafting roles that synergize with leeching as well as there were in Path of Exile 1 potentially. So there's a lot of uh, lucrative sort of defense stat building that you could make from just having a tiny bit of leech on your build in Path of Exile 2. All right, so the next one is one that I really like because I like playing shield builds, right? Or builds with shields in them. I am an old school sword and board player. And so basically Spike Shield gives you just straight up a 50% increased defense buff from the equipped shield. Now, if you are playing shield skills, that does, in the past, that is never attributed to damage. It just increases your defense stat, right? Because the damage that you play, say for like Shield Wall or Resonating Shield, is going to come from the actual armor on the shield. Otherwise, the skill would be just totally cracked into OP, right? However, the next stat also has 1% increased attack rating or sorry, attack damage per 75 armor or evasion on the shield. So that's the damage stat that comes into play. Now, there are a number of these nodes sprinkled around the tree. These nodes synergize perfectly with shield builds and with shield builds that you, that inflict damage from shields, bl max block and or attributing to max block definitely gives you increases to damage as well. And there's a node that we'll, uh, we'll uh, talk about at a certain point 
in the future that does exactly that, which scales up your attack damage based on your amount of block on your shield, which is pretty cool. For the next point, insulated treads is actually quite interesting. So uh, what it does is gain ailment threshold equal to the lowest of evasion and armor on your boots. So ailment threshold to my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, is basically the potency to which ailments impact your character, i.e. shocks, ignites, uh, chills, things like that. So the more ailment threshold that you have, the less damage or the less damage over time or effect that you're going to take from those particular ailments, for example. So in this case, basically stacking evasion or armor on your boots is going to increase your threshold and that's going to reduce the effectiveness of ailments on your character moving forwards. I really like this point because yeah, it, ailments are always a painful thing in Path of Exile or were in Path of Exile 1 and they've totally overhauled this mechanic in Path of Exile 2 and this is a really good way to sort of mitigate the impact of ailments on characters that are rolling with armor and things like that. So the next point we have is called Vigilance. Now I like this one because it's very close to the starting area of the warrior so you can basically get to it really quickly. The other big advantage is what I noticed is the way that block nodes are spread out across the tree, it's actually going to get really easy to get to max block. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what max block is, it's 75% is your block cap, right? So basically, there's enough block in the tree that essentially you could max block. Now, the other question is, does this work when you use raise shield? Most likely. So if you've taken damage and you raise shield and you've got this on, what it does is it gives you 10 life gained when you block. And so raise shield uh, based on your stun capacity will essentially give you, you know, life back. So you could use this to basically charge into enemies and regenerate your health, or you could use it in the middle of a boss fight where, you, where you're starting to run low in health. You could raise your shield, max block 100% up to your threshold or just before your threshold breaks, and then essentially gain back a ton of health based on how many times you get hit. So this is actually a much more useful point than what you think it would be before you sort of initially break it down and really understand how block works in Path of Exile 2. Block is actually going to be incredibly strong in Path of Exile 2, and it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to get the max block than it was in Path of Exile 1. We won't need things like Versatile Combatant anymore. We can just do it straight up in the tree. In fact, I don't think Versatile Combatant is even in the tree anymore because it's just an unnecessary node with all the block nodes that have been sprinkled across. And the fact that there's no longer spell block or attack block, it's amalgamated into one block stat, makes this incredibly powerful. So the next point I've got here as well is Polished Iron. And the reason why I like this node is in particular the stat 50% of base armor from equipment also added to stun threshold. So there was in the showcase, they showed how raised shield works. You have what's called a stun buildup meter, right? And so my theory at this stage is that a node like this will basically mean that the more armor that you stack on your build, that'll attribute to your stun meter, aka your stun threshold. And so basically, you'll be able to raise your shield for a lot longer of a period of time to be able to mitigate damage um, from bosses or enemies or whatever it might be. The question will be how this is scaled. Um, we don't really know the answer to that yet because we don't have the mechanical breakdown for how raised shield works and that stun buildup meter works. But I think this will be key in understanding how to be able to raise your shield for a lot longer in Path of Exile 2 if you're playing like a shield build or a warrior or something of that nature. While holding up your shield, your stun meter will build as you take damage. So be careful. If it reaches 100%, your stance will break and you will be vulnerable. All right, so the last point that I, uh, I really like on the tree that I'll feature in this video is actually called Made to Last. And this is very similar to the old Jug Ascendancy called Untiring, which basically gives you damage that's prevented. So physical damage that's prevented is recouped as life over, you know, 10 seconds. This is actually really, really strong. Now, this isn't as potent as the original node in Path of Exile 1, but the fact that this is built into the tree and the fact that the smaller nodes are very likely clustered around actually attribute to probably what the original ascendancy was is fantastic. This was one of my favorite nodes whenever I played Jug characters because this allowed you to do things like Bone Shatter, Trauma Stack, things like that in Path of Exile 1. But it also meant that you could recoup damage on the fly without worrying too much about, you know, getting totally plastered by in inbound damage. It meant that you could be crowded around, take a ton of damage and still walk out the other end. As long as you had enough armor to sustain that damage being taken and you could mitigate it, then you could out recoup the damage that was coming back. Or if you had other things like leech or regeneration, it would just make you so much more tankier in Path of Exile 1. And I see that being a very similar circumstance in Path of Exile 2. It's probably gonna be a node that I go and target to take because as opposed to other nodes, it's gonna react to damage inbound and 
the way that block works, if we run things, if we run glancing blows, then most likely this coupled with glancing blows is going to be incredibly strong. And the reason for that is you'll take 50% reduced damage from glancing blows, right? So the blows that you take, you take 50% less damage. And for the damage that you do prevent off of that, you're going to then recoup that at 0.5% of the physical damage taken over a 10 second period, which is recoup over time, which is quite strong and is one of the reasons why glancing blows got reduced uh, from or, or changed from 50% originally in Path of Exile 1 to 65%. I feel like potentially there's a mechanic that may break or not break, but it may be a little bit more OP than what they intend. And I feel like that could come from that circumstance. Okay, so if this video was helpful, um, let me know in the description or comments below. Um, I'm basically just working through anything and everything. I've got like a whole vid list to work through. I really like focusing on defensiveness in Path of Exile because I don't like dying in game. I just, you know, and everybody keeps telling me, oh, you're going to die, you're going to die straight away when you get into the game. I feel like if I'm following some of the methodology around some of these defense nodes, that there is actually a stronger argument that you're going to be way more defensive in Path of Exile 2 than what you ever were in Path of Exile 1 within reason and considering the change in the game mechanics. But that's how I feel about the game. Let me know down in the uh, the comments below as noted. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and sub to the channel, follow the Twitch, Patreon's down below too. And uh, yeah, uh, I will see you guys in the next video.